addition and subtraction of uh, fractions of fractions with different denominators. In my other video, I treated the addition and subtraction of fractions with uh, common denominator. The process is almost the same. It's just that there's a slight uh, twist and that involves the use of LCM or LCD. LCD is a uh, lowest common denominator or lowest common multiple. Then you have to sometimes estimate the numerators yourself before um, you do the other parts of the calculation. So let me explain that with a quick example. The first example is a 1 over 3 plus I'll be doing addition first 3 over 2 plus uh, 1 over 6. Let's treat addition first. So now the first step says add or subtract the whole numbers if there are missed fractions. There are no mixed fractions here, so we use the LCD or LCM as denominator, the lowest common denominator or lowest common multiple. You use the lowest common denominator if uh, all the other denominators can go in the lowest common denominator. But if that's not possible, sometimes you have to estimate for the lowest common uh, multiple. In this case, we have three denominators, we have three, we have two, we have six. The, the lowest common denominator here is six because three can go in six and two can also go in six. So that's going to be our, our denominator. So we have uh, six. Now what I mean by estimating the numerators is, you know, when we had common denominators, all we just do is to write the numerators out and add them together. But in this case, you have to estimate for denominators. Now, how many times can 3 go in uh, 6? That would be 2 because 3 multiplied by 2 is 6. So 2 multiplied by 1 will give you 2. Plus 2 in 6, that's 3. 3 multiplied by 3, that's 9. 6 in 6 is 1. 1 multiplied by 1 is 1. So you see we have a different numerator uh, entirely from what we were given. So we had them together. 2 plus 9 is 11. 11 plus, um, plus 1 is 12. So we have 12 over 6. So um, this is a perfect division. 12 divided by 6 is going to be 2. Second example. 2 whole number, 1 over 3, plus uh, 1 whole number, 1 over 5. Here, yeah, we have missed fractions, so we are going to add the whole numbers, which is 2 plus 1. So I have 3. Using the LCD or the LCM. Now, there is no denominator here that is common to the two of them. So we have to look for the multiples of uh, 3 and 5. The multiples are common to the two of them. The first thing you can do by default is just to say 3 multiplied by 5. And this is um, 15. Now, so we can use 3 multiplied by 5 because I don't think there's any other number less than 15. That 3 can go in and 5 can go in. So we can have 15. So now estimating the numerators, we have 3 in 15. How many times can 3 go in 15? That's 5. 5 multiplied by 1 is 5. Plus 5 in 15 is 3. 3 multiplied by 1 is 3. So we have 3 whole number 8 over 15. Number 3 now, with same with uh, addition. I have 1 whole number 2 over 3 plus 1 all over 8 plus 5 over 6. First thing we need to do is to add the whole numbers. We just have 1 here, so we have 1. Now, our lowest common denominator, lowest common multiple, um, there is no denominator that is common to, there is a common multiple to the three of them because 
three cannot go in eight, not possible, six cannot go in eight, perfect. So we have to estimate for the lowest common multiple. So what you can do is to have uh, three multiplied by eight, say 24. Three multiplied by six is 18. Eight multiplied by six is um, 48. I think that's there about the combinations uh, we can have. So let's look for the lowest common multiple that um, all these denominators can divide perfectly. So 24, yes. Three can go in, uh, okay, we start from the lowest. The lowest is 18. Three can go in 18 perfectly, that's possible. But eight cannot go in 18, even though six can go in 18. So we strike this out. We move to the next one, which is 24. 3 can go in 24, that's possible. 8 can go in 24, possible without remainders, and 6 can go. So we choose this, we don't have to move to 48. So our lowest common multiple is 24. Estimating the numerators now, how many times can 3 go in 24? We have 8. 8 multiplied by 2 is 16. How many times can 8 go in 24? We have 3. 3 multiplied by 1 is 3. How many times can 6 go in 24? That's 4. 6 multiplied by 4 is 24. So 4 multiplied by 5 now is 20. So we had them together. We have one whole number. 16 plus 3 is 19. 19 plus 20 is 39. 39 over 24. But then this is an improper fraction. Never leave your answer as an improper in improper fractions. So we have one whole number. How many times can 24 go in 39? I think just one. Take it away, you have five here, one. So one time, we had it to this one that we have, plus one. Then we have 15 left over 24. So our answer will be two whole number, 15 over, uh, 15 over 24. So, you can leave this like this or you can still reduce this to the lowest possible because 3 can go here in 5 times and 3 can go here 8 times. So we have 2 number 5 over 8. Now subtraction now. Now we have um, 8, or no, 8 over 11, sorry, 8 over 11 minus 2 over 3. Now, there are no missed fractions, so we look for the lowest common multiple, which in these cases are just two fractions, 11 multiplied by uh, 3, that will be 33, because there is no other number lesser than 33 that these two can divide perfectly. So how many 11 can we get in 33? That's 3. 3 multiplied by 8 is 24. How many 3 can we get in uh, 33? That's 11. 11 multiplied by uh, 2 is 22. So we have 24 minus 22, 2 over 33. Simple, isn't it? Another example. 3 whole number, 1 over 2, minus 2 whole number, 7 over 12. In this case, there are missed fractions. So what we do, we subtract the whole numbers first. This is 3, this is 2. 3 minus 2 is 1. Now look for the lowest common multiple or lowest common denominator. The lowest common denominator to the two of them, 2 and 12, is 12, because 12 can go in 12. So, we have 12. 2 in 12 is 6. 6 multiplied by 1, 6 minus 12 in 12 is 1. 1, minus, 1 multiplied by 7 is 7. So, I have one whole number. 6 minus 7 is minus 1, all over 12. But then I can't leave my hands out like this because I have an, a whole number to fill this. Don't forget, the whole number in any fraction represents a unit of that denominator, which means this one here represents 1 of 12, which is actually 12. So now, what I do is I borrow this one. That means 1 minus 1. I have 0 left, actually. I borrow it and bring it here. I have 12 minus 1 over 12. This is a zero, zero whole number, so we don't need to write it. 12 minus 1 is 11 over 12. And my answer will be 11 over 12. Don't forget I said that when you are reading missed fractions, one whole number, 1 over 12, 
is this is read as 1 over 1 over 12 not 1 multiplied by 1 over 12 and likewise here is not 0 multiplied by 11 over 12 because otherwise my answer would have been 0 and that would have been wrong so this is 0 whole number which means there is no whole number we have 11 over 12 and that is why my answer can be written as 11 over 12 um, I believe this video has helped you you can share with your friends, like my Facebook page, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and watch out for more videos. Bye!